okay, so I need to sketch in a little bit of background on this. Um, he'll probably talk more about it in the uh, video. Um, but um, but yeah, white the one you gave me was actually age restricted, and which um, it just creates a whole host of problems. Uh, when um, there's a certain way I was wanting to explain this. But yeah, it just um, it one. It makes it so uh, I can't download the videos if they're age restricted. Like I can't download them, and um, only certain only certain people can watch them. Like you know, eighteen and eighteen and up, and where whereas with me, anyone should be able to watch my videos, not just the older ones. So, luckily, he has this version here. And then for for those that don't know, um. White women here. He wanted me to do a. He wanted me to do a reaction on this video. Um, I watched this. Um, I watched this video a few times over the years. So I figured, man, eh, why not? Otherwise, I think I'm good to go. Hi, this is Gerald, and this video exists because the original version got age-restricted by YouTube. In short, this means some of you can't watch it, so I made an alternate cut that hopefully won't trigger anything. Fast forward to here to watch it now. Short story long... Uh, what you well, I'll go ahead and do... Okay, yeah. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna go ahead and show this whole thing. Hi, this is Gerald, and this video exists because the original version got age restricted by YouTube. In short, this means some of you can't watch it, so I made an alternate cut that hopefully won't trigger anything. Fast forward to here to watch it now. Short story long, I spent an embarrassingly long time on this video to try to explain why fighting games aren't just a bunch of button matching. Luckily, when I uploaded it, the response was everything I had hoped for. People found it a useful primer on fighting games and something they could share with their non-fighting game yep. friends. But it wasn't until a few days later... And for what it's worth, this was one of the... This is one of the things that got me into fighting games many years ago. Um, I'm trying to remember which video it was. Uh, Cosmonaut Variety Hour. Why you should play fighting games. I got about halfway in there. Um, those that know me know what I'm about, about to say. I uh, saw Broly legs, and I figured, oh, maybe I, oh, maybe I should at least give, them, you know, maybe I should at least give them a try. So then, um, right when I did that, Corey Gaming video started appearing. So I just started watching them, and then, like I said before, I've uh, seen this video a few times over the years. So, but not a, uh, not this version. on fighting games and something they could share with their non-fighting game friends. But it wasn't until a few days later when I found out the video got age restricted. Like a lot of you, I was pretty surprised and confused. Was that really an R-rated video? So I tried my one chance to appeal, but they rejected it. No specific re that, That's something else that's kind of bullshit about the way YouTube works. Is uh, when, they, when they copyright claim your video or when they do stuff like this, you can appeal it but you're appealing it to the very same people that's copyright claiming your video. Which is, no, no, it should be taken to like a third party. You know, like a like an actual impartial judge, that kind of thing. You know, not to the very same company that's fucking you. So, so hardly a surprise when, they're, when they uh, reject your, when they reject your appeal. Reason was given, and people had all kinds of theories as to what it could be. So I guess I have to guess. It probably goes without saying at this point, but for content creators, YouTube is like trying to play eight-player Smash with all items on in a scrolling stage. That's in order for everyone to be able to watch this video, I went ahead and made the family-friendly cut with your suggestions on Twitter. It has some alternate jokes and references not in the original version, so my biased opinion, I think it's worth a watch. The original version will always be up if you prefer watching that instead. So without further whining about YouTube, I present to you Why Button Mashing Doesn't Work, Family Man Edition.
Button mashing in a first person shooter doesn't work because you just waste all your yeah. ammo before you got anywhere. It doesn't work in real time strategy because you wouldn't even be able to select your starting units. Commando, there are tutorial videos awaiting your review. And mashing in a driving game would probably look like you were really drunk. It's obvious why it doesn't work in those games because random button mashing is the video game equivalent of violently flailing your limbs. That's why it kind of makes sense that people button mash in fighting games. Most people don't know how to fight in real life. Violent limb flailing might be a good strategy for beating your younger brother or sister, but everyone knows that this is far from martial arts mastery. It yeah, and and I'm kind of I'm a button masher too, so. But um. Good thing I had this up and running. I mean, yeah, to this day. God, I'm, this is, this is kind of relevant. So, but yeah, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a masher myself. I mean, even in some, even in something like pinball, you guys are probably seeing it. I'm always flapping and flipping and and all that. Even while, even when I don't have the ball, I'm still still flapping the flippers. Um, but yeah, when it comes to fighting games, I'm kind of like that as well. Um, in fact, the game I'm playing these days, Dojo or Dojo Masters. Um, yeah, I, it's just it's kind of a kind of a nasty habit I have. Um, it's one I can't get rid of. It just I I gotta be pressing some. It's probably one of the reasons why I suck at fighting games. It just I I I gotta be pressing some. So it is understandable why people do this. When you have no choice but to fight, it's better to do something than to yep. just stand there getting hit like a dummy. Game developers understand this, which is why they've taken measures to make button mashing do cool things. Mash punch to punch a lot, mash kick to kick a lot, mash L to do all this. Stuff like this can make limb flailing a bit more dangerous, but it won't make button mashing any more of a viable strategy <laughs> against people <laughs> I forgot about that. What they're doing. It's yeah. a button mashing it fighting is not, So what are these people doing that mashes are not? Why does button mashing not work against them? To find out, we have to go back. That's because uh, they've been playing so damn much, they got it down to an art. Hmm. Kind of picked a bad time to start eating. They're playing at such a level. That they're all kinds of calm, cool, and collected when they're, you know, when they're up, when they're fighting and stuff. They're not having to bang buttons. They can just, you know, how can I put this? Their technique is so refined that they don't need to, they only need to push a button once because they're so good. They know, they know exactly what to do when. I'm kind of like that too when it comes to pinball, but, um. But given the nature of pinball, the ball doesn't always do what you want it to. So that just creates a lot. Oh shit! Oh, you know you're flapping the flippers. You're, or even worse, you're you're popping them both up, which you shouldn't even be doing. Um, you guys have heard me say that from time to time, calling it the double flipper bitch. You know, it's when the ball, it's when you pop up both flippers, but yet the ball just kind of drops right between them. But yeah, it's still a it's still a habit I can't I've never been able to get rid of, even since childhood. So back to the beginning of a round. Round one. Fight. In many forms of wrestling, the round starts up close. 
sometimes really close. In pistol dueling, which was an actual Olympic exhibition in 1908, the fight started from about 20 meters away. But in video game fighting, you can have a wrestler and a gunwoman in the same fight, allowing players to battle in all sorts of ranges. Guess who has the advantage at this range? So I kind of have a... I want to say the pinball equivalent of neutral. I want to say when you actually have the ball. Okay, so this seemed like a great idea in theory. Like doing some, uh, having some pinball going in between the, um, you know, between this and the video, but it's just, it's just too tedious and too much of a pain in the butt going back and forth like this. So, I'll just go ahead and leave this on. But, uh, but as far as pinball goes, neutral, I would probably say when you've, uh, when you've caught the ball. Or, when you're in some position where you know the ball, the path the ball's traveling, you you kind of know what you want to do with the ball as it's approaching your flipper or as it's going to whatever whatever you've designated as point B at the moment. But yeah, I kind of I kind of see a relation between pinball and this. And at this range. The fight ideally starts where neither person has a significant advantage, a situation where it's neutral for both fighters. If you're mashing when the round starts, you might get hit like this. Nope. Mashing randomly fails to consider which attacks have good reach. The side perspective in these games help you gauge distance so you can clearly see your positioning and attack ranges. Having a longer reach means there are ranges where you can hit them while they can't hit you. Why use a stubby jab at this range when you have a giant sword? If you ever watched me play um, Dojo Masters, um, the... The martial arts style I use in there, Krav Maga, it's centered around uh, counters and uh, counters and grabs. But yeah, it's you'll see me do this constantly. Like there's two moves. Um, you can counter a punch and counter a kick, but you'll constantly see me like if you if I do a if I'm doing counter and punch, you'll see the you'll you'll constantly see the uh, arm go up like they're they're trying to. You know, counter, counter punch or counter a kick, you'll constantly see my knee pop up. But yeah, I'm um uh, the I think the one and only time I played online, I I was pretty much taken advantage of on that because the moment my opponent opponent saw me, he just comes in and kicks my ass. So it's what spamming gets you. But like I said, just like pinball. It's a habit I I can't get rid of. Another problem with constantly attacking is that when you start an attacking animation, you cannot block until it finishes. The longer the attack animation, the longer you're vulnerable to getting hit. And if your opponent has quick enough reflexes, they'll take advantage of it every time. So it, um, I got a feeling it's gonna talk about it later, but it's called whiff punishing. Uh, my all-time favorite 2D fighter, Footsies, that's one of the main elements of that game with punishing. In fact, there's a there's actually a mini game in there, where that's what it's all. That's what it's all about uh, with punishing. Whipping an attack and getting hit before you can block again is called a whip punch. Okay. Oh my goodness. Fighting games loosely borrow this logic from real fighting. This whiff then punish is called a cross counter. Just like in any fighting sport, attacking carries risk. It's especially dangerous in games with long-range moves that start up quick, lead to good damage, and have long recovery animations when whipping. The hard slash in the Samurai Showdown series is yep. one of the most notorious yep. examples of this. Yep. Back in the night, back in the, I think it was the early to mid '90s when I first played uh, Sammy or Samurai Showdown, that was what I did. Um. And the AI in the old ones aren't that great. Like they usually, they usually operated on a predictable pattern. So for the guy on the right, the white guy, Hal Maru, if you could um, if you could induce him, like just you know put the jab out there or do a quick attack, 
to try to get him to do the big, the big slash. If you can get him to do that and miss, you can counterattack on him big time. So, that's a all-time classic right here. Whipping it is bad. Another problem with constantly attacking is that you often cannot attack and control your movement at the same time. And movement matters because your positioning determines if an attack will reach or not. While you can't move your head like this in most games, you can move your feet. When you form a strategy based on movement and striking ranges, you have what people like to call footsies. Yep. The kick I'm doing is the most effective move for both range footsies. But the movement doesn't necessarily have to be with your feet because video games have magical characters that can wheel, fly, unfly, or even hover because you happen to be a punching bag. One definition from the Street Fighter based footsies handbook describes. I think I tried, um. I think I tried reading this once. Like many years ago. I don't. I kind of stopped at some point. I don't know why. But yeah, I, I do know about this. Um, and I have tried reading it. Describes footsies as the mid-range ground-based aspect of fighting game strategy. And High Fight has made an entire game around this. Like I said, my all-time favorite 2D fighter right here. Concept called footsies. This game is so mid-range and ground-based that there's no jumping, no projectiles, and... Let's try that again. ...game strategy. And High Fight has made an entire game around this concept called Footsie. This game is so mid-range and ground-based that there's no jumping, no projectiles, and no knockdowns. But what kind of strategy can you have with something so simple? Well, the first lesson of Chapter 1 in the Footsie's Handbook shows one of the most basic strategies. Walk into your opponent's striking range and immediately walk right out to bait them into whipping an attack. Yeah. Then whip punish. You kind of do the, kind of did the same thing uh, back in the 90s on Samurai Showdown like I talked about a minute or two ago. Uh, especially with a Hao Maru or anybody that has that, has a big, huge, obvious um, swing attack. You know, if you try to get them to... You just try to get, you try to induce that big attack so he whips it, and you can counterattack on him big time. Kind of the same thing here. Here it is at normal speed. The strategy is referenced so often because you see it across so many games. Down four one, the down four two is in sight, and it's all AK doing right now. But oh, nope. he can't whip. There are countless strategies, but their effectiveness will differ from game to game. This might be why it's hard for people to agree on what footsies are and why it's kind of turned into a buzzword. And this raises the question, if footsies... Okay, I gotta... I gotta check something real quick. Yeah, this is kind of awkward. Probably should have done a full-blown video on it. Oh, well. Is there about movement I mean? and striking ranges, can't everything be considered footsies? Sure, but there are times when your amazing reach doesn't matter as much, like when you're up close and personal. No matter what anyone says, there is no law that requires you to play footsies. Sometimes you just want to brawl, but you can't just walk up to a skilled fighter without getting hit. That's why most games let you do much more than walk. Oh, also, a side note, for those that don't know, um, I've been mentioned in a game, um, Dojo Masters. It's, um, this is a game it's based on, Karate Champ. It's, uh, you can go left, right, and there's punch and kick, and you can just do various, uh, combinations with them. You can run, roll, dive kick, demon flip, homing teleport, dash, rush attack, or even do a homing dash attack. These things can help you quickly bypass the fighting at further ranges and get right up to your opponent's face. Playing this way is known as Rushdown, or the more derogatory, Unga Bunga. What the hell is Unga Bunga? That's right. <laughs> Unga Bunga! When people are hurling their entire bodies at you, it can be pretty dangerous. Nope. Oh, <laughs> so how the heck do you stop this insanity? Well, if you're good enough, you can try to hit them before they can get to you. Um, the style I, the style I play in, uh, in Dojo Masters, uh, Krav Maga, they're, um, one of their big things is, uh, grabs. 
Um, again, I also set it to countering. So they're, um, I want to say they're, an, they're, they're good at anti-rushdown, like what he's talking about here, when they just fly into you with just this flame lid. Um, how can I explain this? The way, um, I know, the way both, um, striking and throwing works, if you do, um, if you do a leg takedown throw, which is which is a kick throw, it automatically uh, bypasses any kick attack that they were doing on you. So if they're kicking you, you can do a kick throw. You'll automatically counter that kick and you'll throw them. Um, the same with punching as well. So yeah, let, we'll continue. For example, hitting someone out of the air is called an anti-air, anti -air. but this requires precise timing. Yep. Just like swinging in a baseball game, you can't expect to be successful by mashing. Mistime it and get struck out, or in fighting, mistime it and get knocked out. This is one reason the Dragon Punch, aka Sheng Long, is such a good anti-air. It covers this whole area. But sometimes their rushdown will be too fast for yes. the reactions, which yes. means you might be face to face. Now finally, both of you are close enough to hug. But up close, the fight becomes very different for reasons other than being able to grab each other. There's little room to move forward, and the reach of your attack is less important because any attack will reach. What matters more here is who will grab or strike the other person first, which is determined by attack speed, or more technically, the startup animation. Naturally, the move with the faster startup speed will beat out nope. the slower ones, assuming the buttons are pressed at the same time. A reason why Fox's Shine is considered one of the best moves in Melee is because it starts up in one frame, aka instantly. That blue light special, man. And that jab that I called Stubby earlier will beat out the sword up close yeah. because it's much faster. When you hit someone during their attack startup animation like this, it's called a counter hit. And yep. depending on the move or game, the attacker might get rewarded with extra damage, more combo opportunities, or in punch out, an instant knockout. So how do you know which attacks are faster than others, and by how much? Well, that's uh, that's one of the reasons why I spam. Or it's also one of the reasons why, when you're uh, watching me, uh, when you're watching me play pinball, why you often see me just flapping the flipper and just ah, it's because I don't know what the fuck's going on. So it's just kind of a kind of a panic thing. Same thing with uh, same thing with uh, fighting games. It's, I think it's one of the reasons why I and lots of other people were spamming attacks. It's just we we don't know what the fuck's going on. And just, <laughs> you, know, you, get so, you just toss something out there. And it also goes back to what I said probably 10, 15 minutes ago. Why uh, why the best players are so damn good. They're, they've been playing this game enough to know what to do when. So they don't need to spam. It's just one single button press at that, you know, at that moment. You know, they don't have to... <laughs> You know, like me and me and lots of other people do. You could eyeball it, but it gets really hard to tell when we're talking about moves with differences of a few frames. A frame is one sixtieth of a second, which is the unit of time used to measure speed in fighting games. But thanks to cool people, there are frame data guides that show you the speed of each attack. Since the one jab is the fastest move Noctis has, you decide to jab up close, but your opponent blocks it. This is where the attacker is stuck in an attacking animation and the blocker is stuck in a blocking state known as block stun. The question is, who will be the first to recover and do a follow-up attack? The answer is Blue Noctis. He gets to attack one frame sooner because his jab made him plus one when it was blocked. I know this because yeah. I looked it up. If both Nocti followed up with a jab here, Blue Noctis would beat out Red so, Noctis. Um, I, what he's talking about, I, don't, I can't remember if he mentioned it already, it's called frame data. You could theoretically build a build your own combo just on frame data alone, but I don't I don't have the patience or I don't have the patience or technical know how to try to actually go you know sit on and you know put all this together. But I I know it's a possibility. It's by one frame. <laughs> If a move is zero on block, they both recover at the same time, hitting each other. 
If a move is minus one on block, the blocker gets unstuck first by one frame and wins the exchange. This is called frame advantage. Each of the thousands of moves out there has an on block and on hit value that determine what your best follow up options are. Easy peasy lemon squeeze. The speed of the jab and its plus one on block frame advantage is why multi evo champ JDCR made an entire video discussing the importance of Tekken's one jab. 초보자 분들이 잘이 게임을 보일 때잘못 보는 경우가 뭐냐면은 되게 큰 기술만. And then I guess uh, what he's talking about here, the one jab in Tekken, in Virtual Fighter, um, the ultimate bread and butter jab in there is actually the low punch, the the crouching punch. And I think it's cons. I think it's considered the best move in the game. Plus, uh, it's also universal. Every character has it. Oh, uh, for what it's worth, the guy who makes these videos, uh, Gerald, I believe he's uh, bilingual, or at least bilingual. He speaks English and uh, I want to say Korean. He may also speak Japanese as well. I don't know, but I know uh, English and Korean are um, two languages. The frame advantage can also help explain why you get hit in certain situations. This is me blocking Law's Dragon Hammer move. The Law players watching will know that I shouldn't be mashing buttons here, but I did, and I died. This move is plus three on block, and its follow-up attack has a startup speed of 11 frames. That means I needed a move with a startup speed faster than eight frames to beat out Law's attack. Yep. According to the frame data of my character, that move doesn't exist. This means no matter what attack I mashed, I would have gotten hit by Law's follow-up move. In other words, it's a trap. More specifically, a frame trap. Frame traps are one of the top reasons why yeah. button mashing doesn't work. After Asuka's while signing four. And then sometimes, um, I don't hear it that often, but um, like certain fighting gamers, they'll say, don't block, don't block. That's one of the reasons why, because of the way the frame data is set up. The block stun that a certain move creates is so high that uh, if you if you do block, you're basically stuck. You're actually just better off um, eating the damage than still being able to be free to do what you want afterwards than actually block the attack and being stuck in that being stuck you know being stuck in block stun for the rest of the round. Again, that's um it's just the way the frame data is set up. On hit. You cannot sidestep. You cannot press a single. The Asuka's while signing four on hit. You cannot sidestep. You cannot press a single button. Otherwise, down two will counter hit launch you. It's something that Fergus likes to call the scrub killer. While being plus is great, being minus can be really bad. If your attack on block has enough minus frames, your opponent will have yep. enough time to punish you before you can yep. recover. And it's also um. It's also horses for courses as well, in case it wasn't obvious. When you're up close to your opponent, you don't do the roar, big old haymaker move. No, you you do like the light quick stuff. You know, because if you try to do a big ass move when you're when you're cozy close to your opponent, opponent, he he can counter you with uh, nearly anything. So. But sometimes, even if you have enough time to punish. You might not reach. The pushback in Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo is huge. One block sweep can send you back to footsie's range and one extra fireball can take you to the end of the screen. ST Ryu says a lull to your nerdy frame data while zoning you out with fireballs. At this range, your punches and kicks won't reach, and if you don't have a projectile to fight back with, you have to dodge and close in. 
Mashing here will be as effective as mashing here. Friendship. Friendship. These are situations where the striking ranges of punches and kicks are less. Um. I have a feeling that this part here, I don't recall being in the original video. I think this is one of the things that um triggered his uh, other video as um age restricted. Why that? I don't know. Friendship. Friendship. These are situations where the striking ranges of punches and kicks are less emphasized, but there are also moments when movement is less emphasized, like when you can't move. Holy shit, this if is a long these one. If ungamentals or a fireball game are godlike, okay, you 17. might score a knockdown on your opponent. The down player is at a disadvantage because they cannot move or attack while the standing player can do whatever they want. This is where- And then, um, in Dojo Masters, whenever somebody gets knocked down, an actual full-blown reset occurs. Like, they, they, got, they get a reset back to neutral position and everything. It's like, round one, fight, that kind of thing. It's kind of unique in um in other fighting game or it's kind of it's kind of unique from other fighting games in that most other fighting games you knock them down they're back up within a second or two but you're still free to move wherever you want. The honorable player will step back and let their opponent get up and take a breather, right? Of course not. This is where you make their life heck. While your opponent is down, you have a chance to move in closer or run away, whichever is best for your character. Depending on your positioning, you might also get a chance to attack your opponent as soon as they get up. The art of attacking your opponent Midi. while they're getting up is called okizeme. Right. Oki from the Japanese word to wake up, and zeme from the word for attack. Like a lot of beat-em-up games, you usually can't hit them while they're on the ground because they're invulnerable, but you can do the next best thing. Time an attack so it hits them the very first moment they are vulnerable. That's meaty. This kind of attack is called meaty, but meaty is a spectrum. Oh, that was so meaty! The later in your attack animation you hit your opponent, the meatier it is, and the sooner your animation. Okay, I can't remember. I can't remember where I read it or saw it, but let me let me try to explain it. Most every other attack in the game, you're wanting to you're wanting to hit them on the first part of the active part of the attack, on the first part. A meaty attack, you're trying to, you actually want to hit them on the tail end of that, uh, of that, uh, of that attack. But like I said, I can't remember the exact words used, but that's, that's generally it. It will recover, giving you extra plus frames. Button mashers tend to eat meaty attacks like a barbecue buffet because they're always pressing buttons while waking up instead of blocking. So the solution is to just block, right? Often Not always. yes, but depending on the type of attack and direction, you have to choose the correct way Cross to block. Cross up. High or low, and left or right. When the attacker makes this ambiguous for you, it's called a mix-up. I'm gonna block this block, mix-up. But what if you don't want to block, and you don't want to get hit? There is another option. In addition to being a good anti-air, Shenglong is also one of many different types of invincible reversals. If timed correctly, these moves will be invulnerable at the moment you get up, allowing you to go through the media attack and hit them instead. <laughs> oh, oh, the reversal, yeah. So how do you defeat Cheng Long and stand a chance? You just move away or yeah. block. Ryu is yep. <sighs> I forgot what I was gonna say. But yeah, you don't you don't always want to crowd your opponent. Because they can do something like this. And again, um, it could also be a good idea to get as close as possible to your opponent to try to, kind of like what I said about the uh, Samurai Showdown, try to induce, try to induce your opponent into doing that big ass, big ass swing attack so you can counter attack them. Kind of the same thing here. There's actually a, there's like a happy medium you want to stand, you don't want to stand too far away from them because then he ain't going to do anything but too close and you get hit with the uppercut. So there's just out of reach of that, of that uppercut. 
exaggerating about Sheng Long the whole time. And of course, to beat Block, you grab. Right corner pressure, Powell going in. What's next? Another one? And three? Throw no, no, don't tell one. me four! Don't tell me four! Don't no. tell me four! As you can see, Okizema is about commitments and decision making because the timing of the exchange revolves around someone getting up. Some games like Tekken let you hit people on the ground and from the ground, but you still have to get up eventually. And sometimes, $60,000 can be riding on the one decision yep. you commit to. 60000 With one fix up! So are these sick reads or lucky guesses? This can get pretty political, especially waking up super wild American. Not enough to kill! Oh, oh he's, he's got him! him he's again. got him! Three he's got him! He's got him! Such is the nature of Okizeme. Some or all of these concepts apply to every fighting game, but each game will have a different take on how they work. And the diversity of characters allow there to be unique playstyles within the game. But the other aspect of what makes these characters interesting is how you play them. One of the most memorable Street Fighter matches was a DreamHack winner. This was, um, I remember, this is another match I watched. This is another thing that got me into fighting games. 2013. An unknown amateur Ryu who went by the tag Gandhi had such a bizarre playstyle, he tilted his more orthodox opponent and ended up beating him. FSP is completely... <laughs> FSP... And then, related yet unrelated, pinball is ripe with this. Like, I could go... I could go on a table like Bram Stoker's Dracula and practically stomp the yard and, you know, get three multiballs go out at once while, you know... You know, do that for a, do that for a long time, rack up a huge score. Then I can go to a, I can go to an easier table, like a big shot, and not do jack shit on. Him. So, yeah, it, same thing here. He's completely, I, I want to say mind effed. <laughs> and this match kind of ended up being. The but yeah, this this is pretty much how I play here, um, Gandhi. Yeah. The Eche Mono of Street Fighter, a well-intentioned beginner uncompromised by formal training. But while Gandhi was playing at a beginner level, he was far from randomly button mashing. These jabs, even though he was whipping against a crouching opponent, indicate that he understands quick attacks are preferable at close ranges. Him jumping back and throwing fireballs shows he wants to throw projectiles safely from a distance, and here he even does an anti-air. His rushdown jump attacks are so unpredictable, even he doesn't seem to know when he'll do them, and when he knocks down his opponent, he adds pressure using yep. some bait. I've said this before about, uh, about playing amateur opponents. They can be pretty tough, too. Even if you're a freaking pro. I mean, amateurs, I mean, if they don't know what they're doing, you're not going to know what they're doing. So... I think there's probably a technical term for it. I don't know what it is, though. Zen, maybe? Basic Okizeme, even closing out a round with a meaty jab. Oh. And of course, he uses invincible dragon punch reversals on his wake up to stop pressure. A lot. Jump. Not be doing this. I wouldn't even be. Wait, wait, the team. Oh my goodness. Gandhi might not have known how to FADC combo into Ultra like his opponent, but he had a semblance of the basics. And it was enough for him to enter a tournament, win a match, and have a great time doing it. Isn't that what everyone's trying to do, after all? This was Gerald from Court. Okay. So, yeah, um... I forgot what I was gonna say, but yeah. To kind of start, I was... I was trying to... I, I still kind of equate fighting games with pinball. If only because both of them are basically skill-based. But I guess, um, oh, thank you. It was just a major pain in the ass trying to transition back and forth between playing pinball and, um, commenting on the video. This might have been something that I probably, um, uh, probably would have been better off if, uh, if I had a decent video editor. That, you know, that was uh, comprehensive and easy to use, yet versatile. I've yet to find one. Oh, thank you.
Oh, same here. But yeah, um, I guess button mashing to me is pretty much an it's pretty much an amateur move. Yeah, I said it earlier. You, you're let me pull my controller on. You're you're spamming buttons because you have no idea what the fuck's going on. So you just you're it's basically just a spray and pray. And again, I do it in pinball all the time. But at least in my mind, pinball is a lot more unpredictable. Than fighting games are. So, I mean, you could, especially if you're playing an actual human opponent. I don't like to use the term because it's so freaking cliche, but you can, you can get in, you can get inside his head and oftentimes, or potentially, get inside his head and oftentimes know what he's gonna throw before he even throws it. You can't. You could only do that to some extent in pinball. Cause I'm sure you guys watch me do it too. You know, I make these, you know, making these great shots or doing damn good on a, on one table. Then on the next table, you do absolute dog shit. And there's really, ultimately, nothing I can do about it. At least, um, yeah, I kind of lost my train of thought. I mean, part of this too is, uh, I. I kind of want to do some, uh, I kind of want to do some pinball too, so, uh, 